Hi, in this lab, we are going to take a look at measuring the electrical conductivity of different substances to determine if they are electrolytes or not. So um, here is on Canvas, our front page, there's a link to our electrolytes. Um, and then you're gonna open up this chemistry uh, titrations for electrolytes. It's a titration um, window that you have seen before, okay? Um, but it's a little bit different because what you're going to see here is with live data, there's a burette option, there's a pH meter option, and there's a conductivity meter option. And if that conductivity meter option isn't showing up for you, go to live data and then just click on conductivity meter and it should. The other thing you're going to notice is we've got three substances that are out here for us. If those three substances are not out for you, come to the stock room and just um, click on them and then they will come out. But I'm hoping that it just opens with those substances for you. Um, I think I have linked it in such a way that that will work. So what you're going to do um, is you're going to classify compounds as electrolytes by testing their conductivity in aqueous solutions. Now, um, we have seen that sport beverages advertise they have electrolytes. Sweating can reduce the salt in your body. Um, and so, right, we've, we've kind of referenced electrolytes with that. Now, um, another definition of electrolytes is that they are substances that can con conduct electricity when they are dissolved and break apart into their ions. So um, when we look at this, right, um, this just the background is electrolytes are comp compounds that conduct electricity in aqueous solutions. When ionic solid dissolves in water, Water molecules interact with ions, causing them to dissociate or come apart. The resulting dissolved ions are electrically charged particles and allow the solution to conduct electricity. Now, so ionic compounds are electrolytes, but what we'll also find is that acids and bases are electrolytes because they also break apart into ions. So just kind of keep that in mind. This says there's a video that'll give you background on electrolytes. Um, if you have had the class, you've already watched my screencast on electrolytes, you don't, don't need this video. So there's, I, I did not link to it. Um, but this is something I want to, to show you. So when something does conduct electricity, right, we can show a balanced equation of it breaking apart into its ions. Where, for example, sodium chloride is an ionic complex. It's a solid. When you dissolve it in water, it doesn't stay together. It breaks apart into its ions. And so we represent this by showing the ions it breaks apart into. So here's the sodium, and we're going to say, we're gonna look at the periodic table, and we're gonna see that sodium falls into group one, and things that are in group one form a plus one charge. Then the other ion is gonna be chlorine, and what we're gonna see with chlorine is that that is in group seven or 17, depending on what your periodic table, how old it is, right? And things that are the halogens that are in that group form a negative one charge. And we're going to represent that here. You'll notice that the state changes to aqueous um, because we were solid before and we are aqueous now. Um, and so we see a state change. I also want you to notice that this is a balanced equation. There's one sodium here and one sodium here. For contrast, look at the sodium carbonate. Notice there are two sodiums here. And so we put a two in front of the sodium here. Notice though, that even though there are three oxygens, we're not gonna break up the carbon and the oxygen because we recognize this as a polyatomic ion. So it's been a minute since we've looked at polyatomic ions. So my suggestion would be to go to the files tab in the course, the Chem 103 lab, uh, not the lab course, but the regular course. And you're gonna see a list of polyatomic ions there. And so because this is a polyatomic ion, it's a package, it stays together. We, and we recognize that as carbonate, that's CO3 two minus, okay? And so we'll, we'll keep that together as well. Um, so you're gonna walk through and you're gonna answer this, right? Um, so there's, a, there's the one question. And then here's the procedure. Um, you are going to, for example, weigh out sodium chloride um, into a beaker right beakers are here you're going to put the beaker here and then you're going to turn on the stir plate switch okay and then it will start stirring uh, once you add you'll add water and sodium chloride this is your conductivity probe you will just 
drag the probe there and it will go into the beaker and you will record the conductivity shown here. And of course you can see there's the conductivity meter shown here as well, depending on what you want. Now, what you're gonna do is you are going to measure and record the conductivity of approximately 0.5 grams of sodium chloride, one gram of sodium carbonate, and 0.7 grams of um, baking soda, right? Then what you're gonna see, right, is you're gonna move the salt bottles back to the stockroom counter um, and you need to get three more reagents. So to do this, to get your new reagents, you need to clear the lab here and go to the stock room and look for potassium nitrate, ammonia chloride, and ammonia, okay? And these are gonna be in the acid, the base, and the inert salt menus. So for example, if I go to the inert salt menu, that's where I see the potassium nitrate. I can salute, uh, select that. We can come to the base menu and that's where we see ammonia right and so um, and then of course the acid menu and that's where we see ammonia chloride and so you just need to select those to get your your new things um, once you have completed those three reagents you're going to clear the lab again and obtain two more samples which is HCl and then HCN and both of these are from the acid menu and so you will test the conductivity and record the conductivity here this is going to be check boxes. You're going to say which compounds are electrolytes. If we conduct electricity, then we are electrolytes. Now, what I'm not talking about is if it reads 0.01, right? Because if we look at this um, kind of as we are looking at our live data, um, at some point, there sometimes can be fluctuations here where it's point, negative 0.01 or 0.01. That's not really conducting electricity, okay? Um, so those would be classified as non-electrolytes. Um, you're gonna see electrolytes that are at least gonna be over one, right? That would be a good way to conduct those, to, to represent those. And then, which are not electrolytes here? You're gonna answer question number two, and then it's, you're gonna say, again, these are check boxes, and you're gonna say, is this ionic or is this covalent, right? And if it's ionic, you're gonna check that they're ionic here, right? And if it's covalent, you're gonna check that they are covalent here, okay? Now here, um, this is, you are, you're gonna write balanced chemical equations for each electrolyte in the data table. So you're only gonna do this if it's an electrolyte. Now in the background section, we already talked about the first two electrolytes. So um, sodium carbonate here and sodium chloride are electrolytes. And what you're gonna do in this area is you're gonna write, you're not gonna do anything, you're not gonna do any of the programming they're talking about, you're just gonna write equations that look like this for things that are electrolytes. But you don't have to do the sodium chloride and the sodium carbonate, because those have already been done for you. So you will um, write those here. This box is, I write huge, and this box is awful small. So you are more than welcome to, to write below this box. There's a bunch of room on this page, so you could say see next page, but you only do this for things that are electrolytes and you're not gonna do it for the first two because they've only already been done. If something's a non-electrolyte, it's not gonna break into its ions, so you're not gonna write that balanced chemical equation for it. Um, and then you're gonna answer this question. Uh, feel free to reach out. If you have any questions, I would be happy to help.